independent in thought, and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Hey, 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 what's happening? I am not Chad Benson. Uh, although, I don't know, I've heard him before. I think our voices are kind of similar. But uh, I am Barsky. This is Barsky Radio. Welcome to it. We're filling in for Chad. Hope you're doing well. I'm joined by my cohorts, Ron Hersey. Our producer is Garrett. And uh, hope you're having a great day. All right. So uh, there's a lot of Trumpster stuff today. So we're going to get into that. And before we even get into the show, I'm just going to tell you that uh, if you're used to hearing somebody railing about the same thing for three hours every day, that's not what the show is. All right. We're going to be a little uh, little different. I know Chad's show is different. Uh, we're, we're a little different, too. So we uh, kind of like to look at the news through a comedic lens. Uh, we make fun of stuff, mostly ourselves. <laughs> Uh, but uh, there's a lot of stuff, let's face it, to make fun of when it comes to uh, uh, the stuff in the news. So uh, I want to just jump right in from the very beginning and talk about Good Morning America. Uh, Michael Cohen did a interview, and he was with uh, George Stephanopoulos. And, uh, you know, the thing with Michael Cohen is uh, I don't know how to feel about him because he is very slimy, very sleazy. Uh, he is a liar. But, you know, the question is, does, just because you're a liar, does that mean that you can't believe a liar sometimes? Because everything he says on this interview, I, I buy most of it. Uh, all right, so let's, you, let's play the interview. Let's play a little piece of it, and then we'll talk about some of the takeaways of uh, Michael Cohen with uh, George Stephanopoulos. Steffi <laughs> on uh, ABC's uh, Good Morning America. He's saying very clearly that he never directed you to do anything wrong. Is that true? I don't think there's anybody that believes that. First of all, nothing at the Trump Organization was ever done unless it was run through Mr. Trump. He directed me, as I said in my allocution, and I said as well in the plea, he directed me to make the payments, he directed me to become involved in these matters, uh, including the one with McDougal, which was really between him and David Pecker, and then David Pecker's counsel, I just reviewed the documents in order to protect him. I gave loyalty to someone who truthfully does not deserve loyalty. He was trying to hide what you were doing, correct? Correct. And he knew it was wrong? Of course. And he was doing that to help his election? He, you have to remember at what point in time that this matter came about, two weeks or so before the election, post the Billy Bush comments. So yes. He was very concerned about how this would affect the election. To help his campaign. To help him and the campaign. Of course he was. Of course he was. The guy's running for president. It's pretty obvious. Let me go to fake Trump for a second. Fake Trump wants to jump Yes, fake Trump. First of all, this Michael Cohen is a slime, is a sleazeball, and the truth of the matter is he's had nothing to do with the election. I want to make sure that my wife, Melanie, did not know anything <laughs> about it. Okay? Seriously. She is, uh, when, when she goes off the rails, forget about it. Melanie. Uh, <laughs> here, here are the, uh, some of the takeaways from the rest of it. Um, he says he blindly followed Trump for years. Cohen reiterated what he said in court during the, uh, his sentencing, that he blindly followed President Donald Trump for years while working for him. Well, yeah, because that was your job. Your job was to be the fixer. You were the guy that uh, he said he would take a bullet. It's amazing how quickly... And when you're looking at jail time, all of a sudden you're not taking a bullet for somebody. I always love the guys who are like, you know, I'm blindly following you. You know, I'm very loyal to you until you're ready to have your ass thrown in jail. <laughs> you know, the truth of the matter is your family comes first, right? For sure. Yeah. So uh, you can only blindly follow somebody for so long, and especially when you know that the person is doing some illegal uh, activity. And, of course, you're involved in it as well, you know. Uh, but it, it's it's a big difference between doing illegal stuff or doing shady stuff when you're dealing with a real estate magnet or you're a businessman versus the president of the United States or somebody running for the presidency of the United States. And um, he says Trump himself was the one who negotiated the Karen McDougal payment. Um, because, because here's the thing, though. From the very beginning, uh, Trump was like, I don't know who she is. I don't know, you know what, what this is about. I never met her and all of that. And then, of course, it's coming down to this. So, you know, the question is, like, do you trust him? Do you listen to him because he's a, he's a known liar? He is, I mean, that's kind of why he's going to prison, right? 
Because he lied. Mm-hmm. Well, the last thing you want to hear from someone is, oh, sure, I was lying before. But <laughs> yeah. now I'm telling the truth. Right. So how do you know? But that's my question. Like, is Can you take a liar and say, I, sometimes he tells the truth? Cause, because of, let's just use common sense here. How does Trump not know how much money is going out? Do you remember when, when Cohen said, the, the first thing he said, he said, uh, uh, when this whole thing came out, well, I, I paid $130,000 to uh, Stormy Daniels. I wrote her a check, you know, out of my account. I expected to be reimbursed. or You know, you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, no. If there's that kind of money going out, it's going out from a whatever account it is. Trump knows what's happening. Well, I mean, didn't I? Didn't we find out yesterday that Pecker was also corroborating the story? Like, yeah. he's come out and said the same thing. So even though Cohen's kind of a little bit shady and he's not exactly a truth teller, You've got somebody else backing his story up now. Yeah. It's not just his word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says uh, some of the other takeaways. He says uh, Trump has significantly changed since taking office. Um, yeah, of course. You can go. You go from a billionaire to president is a big change. You know, not necessarily in terms of like the money. You're making a lot less money as president, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a whole different world. He said Trump's in over his head. Anybody who comes from the world that Trump came from and decides to run for office and for some reason gets elected, you don't know what it's like until it happens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, I, anybody would be in over their head. It's not like running a business. As much as people wanted to say no, no. he'll run it like a business, but you really can't. No, you, because there's, there's all sorts of red tape. There's Washington, D.C. bureaucracy. There's all sorts of stuff like that. So, like, a lot of the things he was saying just makes common sense. Like, if I didn't know it was Michael Cohen, who was a liar, it was a sleaze bag. You know, because he is. Um, if it was just any other attorney, I would go, all right, well, you know, or anybody for that matter. This kind of makes sense. Uh, let's see. Cohen thinks Trump is not telling the truth about Russia. It says here in the key moment, Stephanopoulos brought up the special counsel's office uh, investigation of uh, Trump's campaign ties to Russia. When asked if he thinks Trump is currently telling the truth about the subject, Cohen simply said no. I mean, but if you ask anybody who, you know, I mean, has got a, got a brain, they're all going to say no. But here's the bottom line. The bottom line is who cares? You know what I mean? I, I don't think anybody who voted for him cares about any of this stuff. And I think the majority of the people who, you know, put themselves in his place will say, look, if, if I was, you know, caught with, a, with a, a playmate, you know, or whatever, if I was cheating on my wife or whatever it was, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to cover it up. I'll lie, out, I'll lie out of my ass. I'll lie nonstop. <laughs> so they're thinking to themselves, okay, what does this have to do with him running the country? You know, these people want, they want immigration. They want the wall. You know, they want the tax breaks. Uh, they want all the things that he promised during the campaign, correct? So they're not going to make a, make a thing out of this. And I think at the end of the day, um, you really can't. Um, I mean, look, a lot of this is very shady. A lot of this is is... I don't know how criminal it is. Um, I don't know if it's even going to hurt him politically. At well, the I mean, end. well, I think the whole thing rests on what your definition of campaign violation is and your definition of what the payment was. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the purpose of the payment? Well, but, th- but it's his word against Cohen's word because Cohen right. said he did this to uh, avoid any sort of controversy oh. during the campaign. And then Trump's like, no, no, I didn't, I didn't want my wife to find out. What else is Cohen going to say? Right. What, and what would any other guy say? Right. <laughs> Well, no, my, most guys would be like, I don't want my wife to find out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and if you got the where, if you got the the monetary wherewithal to make it go away, you make it go away. Yeah, I know, I know. Like I mean, I, like I said, I be mean, an I, idiot if you did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. So uh, since we're talking attorneys, let let's hear uh, Avenatti, Michael Avenatti. This guy actually, uh, there were people, there were reporters around with mics trying to get uh, you know some uh, soundbite of him. This guy's had the worst month, the worst couple months. And he's still, but but he's like a he's like a roach, he's like a cockroach. The guy won't go away. He's still able to get in front of the TV cameras and get some publicity, even though he's had the worst, you know, like two months. The 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 girlfriend he beat up allegedly. You know the thing with Stormy Daniels now uh, uh, wanting to sue him. Whole thing. So here he is talking about Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen is neither a hero nor a patriot. He lied for months on end about his criminal conduct and the role of the President of the United States. He lied in March. He lied in April. He lied in May. He lied in June. 
He lied in July and only until his back was against the wall and he faced significant prison time did he decide to, quote, come clean. His choice time and time again was to degrade my client, seek to intimidate her, call her and me liars, and seek to degrade the office of the presidency of the United States by seeking to buy effectively an election. This is an outrage. He deserves every day of the 36-month sentence that he will serve. And I will also note with great irony, Michael Cohen will report to federal prison exactly one year after we filed the case on behalf of Stormy Daniels. <laughs> Michael Cohen was sentenced today. Donald Trump is next. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, the serious right after me. Yeah, right, right. You have your own problems to worry about. Yes, fake Trump. Go ahead, quick. Well, but basically, I heard what he had to say, but I got an idea for Hollywood. How about Michael Cohen and Michael Evanati? Michael and Michael, better known as Sleazy and Sleazier. I like that one a lot. <laughs> All right, well, we'll work on that. All right, uh, when we come back, uh, well, we got some more Trumpster stuff because he's very concerned about a possible impeachment. And also, can you rebrand or remake Santa? Rebrand or remake sent. I, uh, I'm not making it up. We'll do all that coming up. Stay here. Uh, this is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson on the Chad Benson Show. Experiencing separation anxiety? <laughs> That's dumb. Check out Chad 24 7 at his website, chadbensonshow.com. And on iTunes, free. The Chad Benson Show. Show. Never feel lonely again. Hey there, how you doing? I am not Chad Benson. I am Barsky, B-A-R-S-K-Y. It's not as cool a radio name as Chad Benson, I'll tell you that. (laughs) (laughs) And this is Barsky Radio, so uh, for those of you who uh, don't know who I am, well, it makes a lot of sense. Unless I'm, you know, uh, unless you're hearing me in Philly. I don't know, maybe we're on in Philly, I don't know. But I know there are a number of stations that Chad broadcasts on. So anyway, welcome to the show. I had mentioned, uh, you know, we, we opened up. There's a lot of Trump stuff today. So uh, my man, the Trumpster, it, it has not been a good last, what do you say, like a couple months? It's been, the last couple of months have not been, not been great for him. He's had some bright moments. But. Yeah, but I mean, like the last couple months were not good. Anyway, so he's walking around and... You know, the more he tweets, the more this guy tweets, the more uh, he's going to get himself in trouble. Somebody's got to pull him aside and say, like, enough. Stop. Time out. It's a time out. Put you down know, the phone. Yeah, just treat him like a nine-year-old. <laughs> Give him a time out. And, uh, but, you know, he's walking around. I guess when things get really crazy or get out of hand, then, you know, you, you, hear, you see more tweets. He gets more defiant. And, uh, you know, so now he's, like, talking about how he's not... You know, can, he's not concerned about uh, impeachment. Um, you know, that, that, that's the one thing I think that, you know, if, you, if you're going to be concerned about anything as far as your legacy goes, you don't want to be leaving the White House with that. I mean, you know, even though Bill Clinton was impeached, you know, he still is able to kind of walk out of there. You know, he's not, not in jail. But he's, you know, he's telling everybody, he says, I'm not concerned about his. Now, these are his insiders, you know, his friends. If, if you're saying I'm, I'm uh, not concerned about impeachment, you're concerned about impeachment. If you're not concerned about it, you're not going to say anything to anybody. And just the thought of it, man, just the thought of it is, uh, is not something I want to think about. Because I'm going to be quite honest with you. You know, uh, uh, this guy, Donald Trump, single-handedly changed talk radio. Single-handedly. Talk radio was dying a very slow death. From the eight years of Obama and the eight years of some bad, bad radio where people were just, you know, for three hours saying the same thing over and over and over again every single day. This guy, this guy came into the, the scene. He turned all the tables over. He changed it all. And uh, for those people thinking that Donald Trump's a political story, it's not a political story. He's an entertainment pop culture story. We elected the host of Celebrity Apprentice as president. If you don't see the humor there, if you don't, and let's face it, from day one. Nonstop, there's been something to talk about with this guy. There's been something from you know the administration that he's done. You know, it's been a it's it's been a real life reality show. No, right? <laughs> yeah. So why do you want that to end? Why would any, even if I'm a Democrat, I'm like, I don't want this to end. 
<laughs> it's too much fun to watch. <laughs> and just think what happens. I mean, you know, if this thing ends, then what are you stuck with? You're stuck with the most boring human in the history of human <laughs> beings. Mike Pence, if, if did you see him in that in that uh, meeting with Pelosi and, and Schumer? Oh my God! All hell's breaking loose, and he looks like his Xanax just kicked in. Yeah, I mean, I, I, was he catatonic, or is that <laughs> did they put a statue in there? I mean, it was just like I was like, what, what am I looking at? Is that is that Mike Pence, or is that the the wax? Is there a wax figure of him in Madame Tussauds uh, uh, museum or yet or no? They had him custom made because they needed a fill in every once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> forget about Elf on a shelf. It's <laughs> Pence on a shelf. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, you know, like, I don't know if he's really smart or if he's just just so boring because, you know, I'm thinking, like, he doesn't even want to get involved in any of it. You know, you, I think he's just, like, laying in wait, and, and that's right. the last thing we need. you got to think in his mind, he's thinking, if I just keep my mouth shut, yeah. but don't make any mistakes, right. all this could be mine. Right, right. So that, I, I think in, in that sense he's playing it smart, but, my God, that would be the death knell for this show oh, yeah. and for just radio shows everywhere. I, I shudder to think. Yeah, let me just do a quick look, because I know we're around holiday time. Dear baby Jesus, if you can hear me, I know your birthday's coming up. Please, whatever you do, keep President Trump from being impeached until I'm ready to retire from radio. Please, if you can, keep him in there for the next eight years if possible. Please. That's all I ask. I'm sorry for everything I've done wrong in my life. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> when you know when a Jewish guy is praying to, to baby Jesus, he's very, very... That's desperation. That's desperation. <laughs> Speaking of uh, holiday time, so you know what? We're, we've gotten into a place in this country where political correctness and me too, and all of a sudden you know, nobody wants to offend everybody. So now they're talking about rebranding. They did like a survey about rebranding Santa. Hmm. Rebranding Santa? Seriously? I mean, why would you want to do that? Well, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Rebranding Santa, and we got some CBS stuff coming up as well. Les Moonves, you got some splaining to do. All coming up on the Chad Benson Show. This is Barsky Radio, sitting in. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Welcome to the program. I am Barsky. This is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. And I hope you're having a, uh, a great, uh, great day. Everything's going well in your life. Getting ready for uh, Christmas, the shopping, all that stuff. Um, you know, enough with the, you know what, leave stuff alone. Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of a traditionalist in a lot of ways. You know, I like my Santa fat with a white beard and a, and a white hair and the red suit, Right. There, I guess they did some sort of survey with um, hipsters, <laughs> uh, millennials. We're not all hipsters. Not all, just ninety percent of you. <laughs> and they want to make Santa uh, a gender neutral. What does that mean? That means that they do not identify as a he or a she. <laughs> okay. They are non-binary. Well, non-binary. There goes the beard. Yeah. So well, I mean, there are <laughs> women that have beards, so you can have a non-binary uh, individual with a beard. There are a lot of women with beards. Wasn't Liza Minnelli for many years? Didn't she have a beard? <laughs> or maybe it was the other way around. I don't know. I knew we'd get around to that sooner or yeah. later. Um, no, no, no. Santa's not gender neutral. Santa's Santa. He's an old man. He lives in the North Pole. And I don't, just leave it that way. That just cuts Mrs. Santa right out of the action. Right. Well, not necessarily. You can have a non-binary individual that's attracted to a other sexes. A non-binary individual. Uh, yeah. Female Santas they're talking about. Uh, not everything has to be gender neutral all, all the time. Ever since uh, you know we've had some issues with people not uh, you know n- not knowing exactly who they are or how they were born or what they are or, or identifying with another gender. N- now, now don't don't pull Santa into it. I don't th- unless he wants to. Unless he's been lying all these years, 
He's been a uh, a fat white uh, guy with a beard trapped in a another uh, person's body. I don't know. Well, no, that that's uh, that's transgender. Oh, that's not quite the same thing. Well, maybe that, maybe that's next. <laughs> transgender Santa. I don't know. He won't know what bathroom to use. Yeah, they want to make him slimmer. They want to give him some tattoos. I don't mind a little bit of ink on a Santa. I love those, like the <laughs> pictures of like the Russian Santa Clauses with the the tattoos. They look like a, a bit of a gangster. Yeah, I don't know. It's just all, all things go feet. Just leave, there are certain things. Just leave it alone. Let it be. I kind of like my Santa to have kind of a Billy Bob Thornton kind of the bad Santa. <laughs> yeah, bad yeah. Santa. <laughs> all right. So uh, CBS. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Ever since Les Moonves had to step down because of the sexual harassment uh, allegations and all of that. Not, none of it really has been proven yet. He claims it was all consensual and all that stuff. But the woman he's married to, Julie Chen, she had to leave that uh, talk show of hers, the, the talk, because that was the whole show. <laughs> the show was doing, like, you know, top stories, and that's what they, they would gossip. They were yentas. They would sit there and just, you know, it was like the, the, the poor man's uh, view or the knockoff view, whatever it was. So she had to leave the show. She was, like, the host of it because her husband was the the story. Well, no, the husband was, was the guy running CBS, so he gave her the show. Gave her that one and Big Brother. So since all this stuff came out, she had to leave that show. So supposedly she's getting back in the uh, Big Brother show. But anyway, it says here she's spending more time focusing on a relationship with her husband, Les Moonves. And she's not buying any of it. I mean, well, what, what is she going to say? I have to think privately. There's <laughs> ashtrays being thrown all over that, that, that mansion. You know, like, how do you stick with it? Like, how do you stick with him? Well, it makes it easier when you have a mansion, so you don't ever have to see him while you're at home. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's probably moved up at this point. Or he's in the pool house or something like that. You know, they have kids together. I understand that. But when every week there's something new coming out, there's some really bad stuff on this guy coming out, all right? So the latest one, Sybil Shepard is claiming that she had a sitcom that was canceled by Les Moonves after she rejected his sexual advances. Uh, she did an interview on SiriusXM's The Michelle Collins Show, she told the host that the show uh, would have been um, running for like five more seasons, uh, and, you know, if she was able to, you know, if she was able to, uh, uh, I don't know, swallow her pride, so to speak. It was very ambitious of her to assume that she'd get five more seasons out of what sitcom that we've never heard of before. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, I love Sybil Shepherd, but I don't recall her being in a sitcom. Yeah, no, she was in something called Sybil. I think that was uh, oh. after Moonlight. She was in like Sybil. I think that's what it was called. Anyway, so what happened was. Uh, according to her, they're sitting around and you know he's drinking, and he says, um, "Well, why don't you let me take you home?" And she says, oh, "I said no, I got a ride. I had my car outside. A good friend of mine was a off-duty LA cop." Then Shepard said that night, uh, after that night, the show suddenly began getting notes about what the character, what her character should do on these episodes, and it was Moonves sending the notes. Like, uh, you know, I think she needs to do this. And, you know, all of a sudden he's, like, micromanaging it. And then apparently uh, it just it just went south after that. And she was not asked back to do the show. And she says, you know, because I, uh, I didn't give in to him. So, I mean, I don't think she has a lawsuit here, does she? Because this, this Alicia Dushku. Wait, what? No, that's her name. <laughs> Elisa, uh, Eliza, or is it Eliza? Eliza Dushku. That's her name. She's an actress. She was in like... Um, yeah, I thought you had Eliza wrong. Eliza. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were laughing at. Oh, that what you were laughing at? <laughs> yeah, what were you thinking? I don't know. Uh, she just settled with CBS. They paid her a settlement. Do you have any idea what that is, what the settlement is? Wait till you hear what it is. Wait till you hear why she settled, how she settled. Okay. She was on this show called Bull starring Michael Weatherly. This guy was on, like, CSI, whatever the CSI was. Anyway, I guess she was sexually harassed by this guy on the set. This girl was in Buffy. She was in the dollhouse. She, she's, like, 37 years old. She's been around. She was playing a criminal defense lawyer on the show. So she said that she's on the set with this guy Weatherly, the show's lead, and he made jokes about uh, a threesome, threatened to spank her in front of the cast. Uh, she said she felt uh, disgusted and violated, and she approached the producer Glenn Gordon Carone, or Karen, I think his name is, and uh, and uh, who said that he would talk to Weatherly with her, and then Weatherly then said that uh, you know he uh, didn't realize he was out of line, he was just having fun, you know that kind of thing was wasn't serious, and then he says during the show I made some jokes mocking some lines on her script, 
He said, when Eliza told me that she wasn't comfortable with my language and attempted humor, I was mortified that I offended her. I immediately apologized. So he's, you know, covering his ass on this one. But you don't have to worry about it because CBS is, is paying her for the pain and suffering. The pain and suffering of, of uh, uh, getting, um, ins- it wasn't even an insult. It was just like um, he was talking about threesomes. That, that was, you know, that was the pain and suffering. Really? Yes. Hmm. Okay. And he, uh, you want to take a guess at what, what her settlement was from CBS? Oh, God. For pain and suffering. By the way, she wasn't touched. Nothing happened. There was no, nothing. This is my favorite part of the show, and we make Ron squirm based on numbers. Say, take a guess. I hate. What did uh, she get as the settlement from CBS? I'm going to say five million. Five million? Aaron, what do you I say? have a feeling it's low. I feel like that's high. Um, I don't know. I'll go two. Two million. Two million. $9.5 million. Jeez, I told you. <laughs> $9.5 million. Good Lord. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, uh, uh, let me pray to uh, baby Jesus again. <laughs> Dear baby Jesus, <laughs> it's me again. Uh, you know, I already asked you if it's possible uh, to not impeach Trump and not put Mike Pence in there. That would be the death knell to the show. Uh, one more quick little, um, if I could just ask you. In my next life, I'd like to come back as a very hot woman. Really good looking, very talented. That's all I ask. Thank you. Amen. All right, there you go. All set. Yeah, I'm all set. I'm all good to go for the next life. Uh, yeah, $9.5 million. Good Lord. I mean, have we, really, have we, listen, I, I, I know that guys get out of line, and I'm, and I'm all about protecting women. I don't believe women should be harassed in the workplace. I don't believe they should. None of that. Okay, I get it. But the, you know, they say that the punishment should fit the crime. The payout should fit the harassment. (laughs) You know, like if somebody wanted to spank me or talk about spanking me and talk about threesomes, whatever, whatever it is, I'd be sitting there going, bring it on. That's, you know, the, the cash register in my head just... <laughs> but how was she able to get that kind of a settlement? That's a huge settlement. She'll, she'll never have to work again. She doesn't have to work again. It's craziness. Well, I mean, obviously she was, you know, either, either uh, cast aside or whatever, but who cares? If just talking about spanking you gets you $9 million, imagine what actually spanking you would have I know, that's you. What I'm, like what I'm saying. You know, she should have been like, hey, I got me into spanking. She should have owned the network. <laughs> under, under her breath. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. Or, or she'd have some friend tell Michael, you know, she really likes to be spanked in front of people. <laughs> now we're talking $15 million. Surprise. Don't even let her know it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. And do it and really embarrass her. <laughs> All right. So uh, speaking of CBS, there's uh, more stuff happening that's at the CBS morning uh, show. This is the show that used to have, since we're talking about sexual harassment, Charlie Rose. Oh. And Charlie Rose, uh, I believe they had to pay out three of the women. And then, you know, his harassment was much worse than this Michael Weatherly. What is it with these guys? I, who the hell is What it, is going on? I don't know. I don't know. It's like uh, the Fox News was the first, uh, then CBS. It's and, like Sodom and Gomorrah, both of these networks. And it's like the networks are worse than the, the, the film guy. Yeah. I don't think Fox was the first. I think it's just the first we found out about. Right. And I think that, honestly, it's not probably just these two. Yeah. I bet you every network out there has these stories. Oh, I'm sure. But some I mean, of them are just better at keeping them under wraps. Yeah. I just don't get it. Or paying them off. But uh, so the CBS morning show has been always in third place in the morning ratings. And they had uh, Charlie Rose, and then, of course, he uh, was fired because of the sexual harassment stuff. So they put a show together of uh, uh, Gail King, who's Oprah Winfrey's uh, girl, I mean, her friend. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, Nora O'Donnell, they're the anchors. And then they're joined by John uh, Dickerson. Okay? So it's one dude and two uh, women. What is that considered to be in the uh, Brett Kavanaugh definition? Now, the Devil's Triangle is the two. Okay, got it. Stop. All right, so anyway, so they, they tried to uh, make uh, some ratings. They couldn't get ratings. They couldn't even come close to any sort of ratings. They couldn't get close to uh, GMA or the Today Show. So now they're supposedly blowing the whole thing up, and they're going to be replacing all three of them with, you know. Seriously? Here's what I would do. Get Matt Lauer back, and then get this Kimberly Guilfoyle. 
<laughs> no, she's another one that got fired. She got fired from Fox. Matt Lauer got uh, fired from NBC for the same stuff. Kimberly Guilfo uh, sending uh, 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 pictures, junk pictures around. So get these two together. You, you, you would know, have you would have to think that would be some good television, right? And you'd have to think they'd all be willing to work cheap. Yeah, I mean that in itself. Absolutely, Charlie, but it, Charlie Rose ain't doing nothing now, so you know. I would just throw Charlie Rose into the yeah, mix too, just the absolutely. hell of it. I'd hire him back. Yeah, I hire all these people. You never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> right, I'd watch that <laughs> without a doubt. Okay, I gotta play with some Kellyanne Conway audio from CNN. You gotta hear this chick with Chris Cuomo. There's an interesting dynamic between Kellyanne Conway, uh, Conway who's a big uh, Trump uh, supporter and uh, fanatic and uh, enabler and apologizer, all those things. She is, you know, like a fixer. And then her husband, who's just the opposite. I'll tell you about that. Coming up, I'm Barsky. This is Barsky Radio for the Chad Benson Show right here. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? I am Barsky for Chad Benson. This is Barsky Radio. Welcome to the program. Hope you're enjoying it. All right. So last night, (laughs) this is craziness. Do you guys watch Chris Cuomo? (laughs) You know, he's not bad. I'm not a big CNN fan. I mean, I watch some of the stuff, but I see a lot of the stuff the day after. He likes to mix it up. Uh, with uh, whoever you know is on there, he's not afraid to get in people's faces. But Kellyanne Conway, I mean, I gotta, I gotta really give her credit. I don't know which one is more of the who's who's better at apologizing for Trump. Is it Kellyanne or is it uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders? Well, it's about the same. That's a tough. It's race, a tough right? one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think Sarah Huckabee Sanders. It's her job to apologize for him. It's really not Kellyanne's. So yeah, it is. Kellyanne's so better. She should get extra credit. Yeah, but this, this is what she's a White House advisor. Okay. Yeah, so, but she's not supposed to be the the face or the the voice of it, right? No, well, she has been. To me, she has been. Anyway, she spent thirty nine minutes on CNN last night. Wow. They should give her her own show. <laughs> at this point, she was on with Chris Cuomo, and uh, they got into it. And uh, she called Chris Cuomo. Uh, she said that uh, he had slurred uh, Trump by calling him a liar. That's not a slur, is it? When did that become a slur? Anyway, so uh, you want to hear some of it because they go back and forth, back and forth. She calls him Christopher, which is, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a very passive aggressive way of trying to put him in his place. That's it's like what, a mom thing. That's, a, that's exactly why she's doing it. But just, just listen to some of it left from last night. Wait a second. This is this is TV. You can't convict somebody, indict somebody. I don't want to convict somebody. anybody. I want it's the not truth. Going to happen. And I want the president well, to keep himself network, out of harm's way. You're telling by America what the truth is now, things. and you're out of bounds. No, he's not. No, 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 no. You just like to say the president lies, and then it goes viral. I actually just don't cut like it. it. No, Kellyanne, really honest to God, this, I don't like it. He said I today, really wish I didn't ever have to say. He it. said today that he did not. He never directed. Michael Cohen to break the law. That's what the president said. And Michael you're telling Cohen the viewers right now David who Pecker expect you to be anti-Trump, deny your that. viewers. No, they actually get frustrated with second. me because they so, believe we're too balanced on the show. They don't want me to have you on. No, they don't want me to have no, any no, on they, from the no, administration. No, no, they're mad at you for having me Trust on. Me. Right. And you know why that is, right? They don't want you to have me on. And my Aunt Rita said today, I don't know why you go on with him. He's not nice to you, but she's she's watching. Come I'm sure. On. Christopher, listen, the, your viewers don't your viewers Tough don't want me to have me, you know don't want to have me on a, for a very a simple place, reason. Honest. Hold on. Can you please let me speak? Go ahead. Please. Christopher, they don't want you to have me on for a very simple reason. They accept, if not expect, you and the rest of CNN to be anti-Trump all day long. And you know it. You don't have the same viewership no. that CNN wants. Right, 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 stop right there. Right. Right. She has a point, though. I mean, CNN is anti-Trump. Right. They're, they're at war. It's the anti-Trump network. I get that. It's the antithesis of Fox. Right. But could you imagine yeah. having to listen to that all day? <laughs> this is what her husband has to go through. But check this story out. Okay? So the husband, you know about him, right? He's an right. attorney. Mm-hmm. His name is uh, George Conway. So he tweets after she does the appearance with Chris Cuomo, given that Trump has repeatedly lied about the Daniels and McDougal payments and given that he lies about virtually everything else to the point of his own former personal lawyer describing him as an effing liar, why should we take his word over that uh, of, of federal prosecutors? So, you know, he's any given opportunity ripping into Trump and her job is to protect them. So what is that all about? When she goes home, what 
what's what's that marriage like? I have to think maybe that's the, that that's how they uh, keep it keep the whole thing keep spicy. <laughs> that's that's the dance they do. You yep. know what I mean? They, that's the, the, I have to think that's the whole thing. They say opposites attract. Right. Uh, I, I have to think that's. The, do you remember these two? Um, who were they? Uh, Mary Madeline and James Carville. The uh, when, when the Clintons were in, the, James Carville was the guy who ran the Clinton campaign. Right, right. Remember right. her? The, the snake. Yeah, the, 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 the snake man. The reptilian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to think like at night he turns into some sort of a reptile. That guy looks really serious. He is. He's like lizard man. But it was the same type of uh, same type of thing. They would go back and forth and argue, and you know she was extremely conservative. He was very liberal. Maybe they make up. Well, that's the whole thing. That's what I have to think. That that's the dance that these two do. Uh, I understand. You know, James Carville and Mary Madeline. I could see the makeup sex there or the hot. You know, mm. uh, you know that, that type of sex. Good God, <laughs> I didn't want to think about Kellyanne Conway, and I didn't know well, he's not in the best of shape. Yeah, I, seriously, <laughs> I don't even want to think about what that's all about. My goodness, uh, but I, I have to think that's the only way that the thing works because you know, you're a bad just, girl today, haven't you? You lied, didn't you? Yeah, you're a yeah. naughty girl. Yeah, I saw you with Christopher. I like when you called him Christopher. Kiss me with that mouth after you lied. Put that mask on. <laughs> All right. This is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Stay right here. Don't move. This is the Chad Benson Show. in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Hey, it's Barsky. That's me. And this is Barsky Radio sitting in for Chad Benson. Have a good old time. Well, um, there's uh, as much as we like to have fun on the show, sometimes you got to touch on things that are unpleasant. And it, it does it seem like six years since Sandy Hook? It's been six years. Today's the anniversary. No, it doesn't. Well, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uh, some idiot phoned in a bomb threat to the Sandy Hook uh, school. Somebody sent in bomb threats all over the country I know. yesterday. Yeah. But, yeah, Sandy Hook got in that, too. That yeah. was terrible. Yeah, it's just it's, it's craziness. But um, there was a commission investigating the Parkland shooting, which happened, it seems like it was like two years ago, but it seriously, it was, what, 10 months ago in February? February 14th? So the recommendation is our president said that he believed that uh, the teachers should be armed. And there, it's a very controversial uh, debate whether teachers should be armed or not. So Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gutierrez, chairman of this high-profile commission, uh, commission suggested uh, that this panel work to finalize a report that might be delivered to the state legislature so they can figure out what to do if they can give the uh, teachers the right to carry firearms in the schools. And, uh, you know, you've got some people like the uh, some of the parents of some of these kids that were shot at Stoneman Douglas uh, saying, you know, we just don't want more guns in the uh, in the school. Now, it's interesting because I would think that if you're a parent, you're thinking, well, maybe, you know what, maybe it's not a bad idea. Because had the teachers been armed, maybe Nick Cruz would have been, you know, taken down because clearly the uh, the, the sheriff deputies from Broward, didn't go in for like at least a minute after the shooting started. By that time, it's too late. School resource officer was hiding. Yeah. So you got the school resource uh, officer hiding. You got the other uh, deputies not going in. Nobody wanted to go in. You had just a, a number of people completely and totally uh, dropped the ball on this one. So now the question is, I mean, do you really want teachers to be armed? I remember some of my teachers when I was in school. I wouldn't have wanted them armed. <laughs> I mean, talk about hair trigger tempers. Uh, but what happens if you have a situation where somebody is armed and it, uh, a student gets out of control or what, whatever happens, and then there's a, you wrestle for the gun? I mean, there, there are a number of things that can happen. And we, I mean, we hear stories of teachers that snap because of dealing with middle school kids or yeah. high school kids. It's just not an easy profession. So we, we, did, we did a story uh, yesterday about this, this woman in California, this teacher, who was cutting a student's hair and singing the national anthem. 
And she said, scissors. Imagine if she had a gun. I don't want that. You know, especially with middle school teachers having to deal with seventh and eighth graders. Middle school's the worst. Talk about someone who could, you know, who's going to snap. Yeah. Those are the people I wouldn't give any guns to. <laughs> if you're in high school, you get a gun. Maybe a kindergarten, you know, to protect the kids. But the truth is, nothing is more important. Do you agree than our kids, right? Safety of our kids. For sure. So here's the thing. When Parkland happened, I got on the air. I started screaming about every single school in this country should be equipped with metal detectors and at least two armed guards at every school. Do we have that now? No. Not even in the state of Florida do they have it where it happened. And... I don't understand why uh, another uh, tragedy has to happen until somebody acts. Like, how many, how well, many school, school shootings do we have to have before somebody does something? Well, that's, that's just the thing. If, if it happens again, and it has happened again, and nothing still gets done. I said whenever the Parkland shooting happened, I said that if Sandy Hook didn't change anything, because, look, don't get me wrong, Parkland was horrible. You know, high school kids shooting is horrible. We're talking about Sandy Hook. They were Elementary, babies, yeah, yeah. and and nobody yeah. did anything when that happened. There, there's so no, why there, would that? There's no excuse. There, I, you can't give me a valid excuse. Don't use the money as an excuse. Well, then lawyers got in with the metal detectors, saying, "Well, if you think you see something, then you got to pat down a student, and then the school is liable to Good. be sued." Good. For so what? Whatever. So what? When you're a student, you, before you go to that school, you sign a waiver away. Pat away. If I had a kid that went to a school. I would rather the kid get getting patted down um, than uh, the They're chance shot down. Been shot down exactly. Yeah. Let me ask a question: When was the last shooting we had in a courtroom in this country, where somebody sitting there in a courtroom decided to shoot the uh, judge or a lawyer? When, when, when's the last time that happened? Can you think of any? I, I can't think of any time. There was one about two or three years ago, maybe five in Atlanta, but the guy took a gun from the cop. Right. No, no. I'm talking about somebody right. getting in. Walking in with, well, you with can't, a gun. You can't. You can't get in because okay. they have metal, metal detectors. detectors. Okay, they have metal detectors and guards. Well, so why is it that we can't treat our schools? Not like I want to, but this is the new normal. Why can't we treat the schools the same way we treat federal buildings, courthouses? Well, I think the detractors would say because there's less courthouses then there are schools in the country, so it's going to so, cost a lot more. That, that, oh. So what? Well, I mean, so what? I know we're saying so what, but the problem is, is the well, moment you bring money into it, that's when people in government start okay, getting a little but, fidgety. Didn't we look at the cost into the cost of those wands? Because I mean, I understand installing some sort of hard installation metal detector could run into money, and you wouldn't want to have one; you'd want to have a series three, right. or, three or four, because otherwise it'd take. All day long just to get the kids to. And a lot school. of school campuses have an open campus but, where there's multiple entrances. Like if you go to a concert, you go to a sure. high school football game. You get wanded, sure. Absolutely. No, they should have the wands, they should have the metal detectors, they should have a campus security. There are a lot of retired cops looking for something to do. Don't tell me there's no money. There's plenty of money. We figured it out once, once this happened, how much money it would cost right. to do it with all the schools. And really, it's a drop in the bucket. It's a, like I said from the beginning, there's nothing more precious and valuable to us than our kids, correct? So there really is no excuse. It's just that the people are just lazy. They're lollygagging. I, I, don't, I don't know how much of this has to do with uh, a, a political standoff. I just don't know. But there's no excuse why this shouldn't uh, take precedence over anything else that we're talking about. And it, and it didn't. How many months are we now? We're 10 months from, from Parkland? This should have been done over the summer. When all the kids were out of the schools. Well, it was supposed to be in Florida, and also in Florida, the state legislature approved the money to f right. for, for all of this well, so, security stuff. Well, and then, like two days before school started, the superintendent came out and said, oh, well, our lawyers told us we can't do it because uh, if we think we see something, then we have to pat down a student, and it's uh, illegal. It's thing. infuriating. Yeah, it is. It's infuriating. All right. So since we're talking about schools, and um, do you see that our president's doing away with all the stuff that Michelle Obama did with the school lunches. All the eat healthy things. Well, she made it healthy, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but they showed some photos of some of these lunches. I, I would have done away with it, too. <laughs> well. it, it was like a little piece of chicken that was like, I don't even know if it was chicken, and then cauliflower and um, like a like something that, that looked like fruit. I mean, some of these, just because you, you, 
you give some sort of a uh, an outline of, of the of the food that the kids should be eating, you have to follow through with really good food. Kids aren't going to eat it. I mean, that sounds like dinner for me. So I don't really talk about yeah, that. well, that's because you're, you're like a bird and you're on your weight loss thing. <laughs> but I'm just talking about so the Trump's done away with that, and uh, he says that. Well, let me go to fake Trump. Fake Trump, you jump in. Well, basically, I've said, look, enough is enough. I mean, there was Obamacare. We got, we got, we try to get rid of that. But if I can't do that, then I'm going to do something about the fake lunches. So, kids, I'm making lunch great again. Okay, <laughs> just let you know. And uh, here's the menu from here. And then Monday, a four-piece KFC lunch bucket with cookies, biscuits, of course, Diet Coke. <laughs> Tuesday, a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese, filet of fish, large fries. Diet Coke. You gotta have the Diet Coke in there because you gotta watch the calories. Right, can't be irresponsible. Wednesday, a Whopper with cheese, large fries. All kids get a free Burger King crowd too. Okay. Of course, Diet Coke to wash it down. Thursdays, I call it Thirsty Thursdays. Thirsty Thursdays. Taco Bell burritos. All you can eat. All the Diet Coke you can drink. And then Friday, free for all Fridays. I call this the Trump combo platter. A Wendy's triple cheeseburger, large McDonald fries, four large cookies from KFC, and of course, Diet Coke to wash it all, all down. You're welcome, kids. Who's your best president? Who's the greatest ever? I think you know the answer to that. That I can tell you. All right. Well, I have to think that uh, I would uh, certainly, if I was a kid, I would certainly want to uh, chow down on that. I'm enrolling. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah right. All right. Uh, when we come back... We have, uh, I want to play some Tucker Carlson audio. Do we have the audio, Tucker Carlson? Or maybe we don't have the audio. Well, just tell him. I, I want to talk about what he said, and he's not really getting hassled for it. Um, but we'll get into that in just a touch. Also, there is a big, big event that was supposed to happen tonight and this weekend involving, I'll just say it was, it was something called Sex Island. It was a getaway <laughs> for guys everywhere. They'd have to cough up almost four grand. I, I don't know if they're going to do it. But we'll talk about that coming up. I am Barsky. This is Barsky Radio on the Chad Benson Show. Feel free to punk this punk rocker any time of the day or night. Reach Chad on Twitter at Chad Benson Show and on Instagram at Chad Benson Show. And oh yeah, the Chad Benson Show on Facebook too. Punk that. This is the Chad Benson Show, and I am not Chad Benson. I am Barsky, and this is Barsky Radio. And welcome to it. Tucker Carlson last night stepped up his anti-immigration rant with an endless chain of migrant caravans making America dirtier, is what he said. On Tucker Carlson tonight. When did he stop wearing those bow ties? Wasn't that his thing for a while, those bow ties? It, it made him more more annoying. <laughs> I think he stopped, stopped wearing them right after he got a good look at himself in the monitor. Realize how, how pretentious he looked? <laughs> he looked like a, like a prep school <laughs> he did. senior. Yeah, he, like, like the guy who is the prep school senior who's the, uh, like the like, kind of like the bully, the rich kid bully. He's got the, he, someone probably pulled him aside and said, listen, listen, you're, 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 you got to get away from that bow tie thing. <laughs> you know, bow tie should be worn by... Like old guys and also uh, Nation of Islam guys. Happy we Herman. <laughs> if he makes a comeback. I'm so Do, sure. Doesn't look good on you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Tucker, Tucker Carlson has been actually very uh, vocal about this uh, immigration situation with the caravan. By the way, how are they doing? Where are they? Do we have any idea of uh, how close they are? <laughs> and uh, I understand that, that some of them have decided they're just going to, uh, I don't know, make, make a place to live in, in Mexico. Uh, I don't think uh, many of them are even close. I think we had the, maybe maybe a hundred. I saw something where it was like a hundred of them got very close, and they said that if you want to send us back uh, to the American government, give us fifty thousand dollars a piece. Yeah, <laughs> nice try. To, yeah, we'll all go back if you give us fifty grand. <laughs> there was like a hundred or hundred and fifty of them. I thought that was pretty ballsy. Yeah, you can't knock them for having the cojones. Right. Right, and, and I like the cojones because it is kind of you know it's Mexican, Mexican. No, that's not. I don't, that's it that's isn't Hawaiian Samoan, isn't it? Cajones. No, what are you talking about Come Samoan? On. Is it? No, is that thought, Samoan? Cojones. I don't even know how to spell cojones to look it up. Yeah, don't even bother <laughs> looking it up. All right, so let's play the audio. Let's play the audio of Tucker Carlson from uh, Tucker Carlson tonight. Let's hear exactly what he said because he's getting a little heat from it. 
Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Here's a funny thing that we noticed the other day. People debate all the time about mass immigration. What you never hear anybody do is make the economic case for mass immigration. But as an economic matter, this is insane. It's indefensible, so nobody even tries to defend it. Instead, our leaders demand that you shut up and accept this. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Huddled masses yearning to breathe free? Nope. <laughs> Cynical shakedown artists who've been watching too much CNN. All right. Okay, so uh, he, wouldn't, he didn't call them dirty immigrants. He said that it made America dirtier. Which is basically the same thing. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. But here's the thing, though. Uh, I understand where he's coming from, and uh, let's face it, we need to secure our borders. Obviously, we need to do that. But is he like one of those guys who believes that there's that we should deport all the immigrants or all the illegals? Because I got news for you, man. You're, I, I'm sure he lives in a nice home, wherever he is at, and I guarantee you in the dead of summer, he doesn't have college kids coming over and cutting his lawn. <laughs> those illegals are cutting the lawn. If he has a problem with the roof. Who do you think is working on it? It's not college kids. You know, these, these uh, legals are doing the jobs Americans don't want to do. But, and I understand securing the border. I understand, you know, if you want the wall, that's fine. All right? But um, I don't know, man. Um, I mean, this country was built on uh, immigrants. And, you know, if you want to say enough is enough, all right, I get it. All right, that's fine. But, uh, I don't know, making it dirtier? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we've already got, listen, we've got so many people here who are doing all the jobs Americans don't want to do. I see them all the time, you know? Uh, like I said, when was the last time you saw a college kid cut, cutting a lawn, someone's lawn, or working and, and, and doing uh, the uh, yard work in a, in a uh, condominium area or you know, a place like that? You, you don't see it. Well, if he's come gone out of college, he's expecting, you know, six figures and uh, yeah. four and out the door. Yeah. Because that's what they're getting told in college. Listen, I, I see both sides of it, to be quite honest with you. All right, so there is a an event that was supposed to happen. I don't even know if it's happening now. It's called Sex Island. Listen to this. Listen to this bit. So this this company called Good Girls Company, it's just a bunch of guys who got together and said, boy, how do we get guys to cough up $4,500 a piece for a ticket? See, there's your college guys. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so here's what it is. So, so basically, 50 men are invited to a mystery island for a four-night vacation where they've been promised drink, drugs, and unlimited sex with up to 100 prostitutes. All right? How many guys? Like 50 guys. You know, only 50 guys are so allowed. Two girls to one. Yes, two girls for a guy. But but they're saying that... Odd the, that I would go to that. Yeah, but, right. <laughs> Who would want that? <laughs> but, you know, this is the ultimate bachelor party, uh, you know, deal, right? But it's $4,600. So the local government in Trinidad, they didn't know this was going down, and somebody, I don't know, somebody... Uh, Saw the website? <laughs> maybe, and just alerted them to it. And uh, big total total C blocker. I mean, in a big way. So uh, the uh, the police commissioner there said that um, they're being extra vigilant and promising to act swiftly as soon as possible to pinpoint the location of the event. Apparently, they changed the event and changed the island. Uh, you know, they do it maybe four times a year. They make a good amount of money. And but here's the here's here's the best part of the story. So I was reading where a 16 year old kid who was a 16 year old virgin heard about this. A boy. Yeah, and exactly. And so he took his father's credit card. Oh no! And he decided that he was going to buy it. So when they found out it was him and what he did, they give him quote what they call the golden ticket. And the golden ticket is he gets carte blanche of any woman and like anything he wants to do. Carte blanche, right? So the father finds out about it, and the father gets angry. And then when he thinks about it, he goes, why am I so angry? And he's thinking, I'm angry because I'm not going. <laughs> Give me that ticket. Yeah. I'm confiscating this for your own good. Right. All right. And I'll tell you how it was. When we come back, would you want to give your uh, uh, eulogy at a funeral? We'll do that coming up. Stay here. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. 
This is Barsky. That's me. And this is Barsky Radio in for Chad Benson. Hope you're doing well. What are the Clintons up to? Bill and Hillary. What have they been doing? <laughs> Trying to get somebody to come to their <laughs> their U.S. tour. They got this this <laughs> tour going. Whose idea was that? <laughs> it had to be. That had to be his idea. I don't see her wanting to do it. But someone probably sit down with him and said, you know, listen, here's here's the thing. There are a lot of people who really miss you. A lot of big Hillary fans out there. A lot of people want to see you. And why don't we put you together out on a stage? And, uh, and I'm, I'm telling you, everybody's going to want to see that. They're going to want to see maybe some fireworks. I don't know what they're expecting. Like, what do they do? They tell stories? Do they tell, like, wacky stories? Hey, Hillary, why don't we tell the story about the time you found out that I was with this uh, Monica Lewinsky and you threw an ashtray at my head? I tell you what, they went crazy. <laughs> Wait till you hear the story, people. What are they, like, what is, what's going on? Is there a band there? I just saw a picture of them just sitting on a stage in chairs and, uh, and talking, I guess. Wow. Yeah. And, and the ticket prices are astronomical. Oh, yeah, but here's the thing, though. They're, they're not even... They're not even half full. These venues, no. they were they were uh, booking some of these. Like, oh my God! They I mean, probably like their people are like, I'm telling you, this thing, we could we could fill Madison Square Garden. <laughs> you know, we got to because they were. Uh, Bill's probably thinking, I think we probably need to go, just kind of go, maybe like a, a, a coffee house or you know, like a <laughs> comedy club or something. No, come, on, Mr. President, you don't realize how popular you are, and and your wife. You kidding me? No, we're going to the top. We're going to the you know stadiums. We're gonna you know, we're gonna fill these things. Gonna Arenas, be, right? The people are gonna be waiting in line to see you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so they're charging. They were charging, uh, I guess, at the beginning, like a hundred bucks to see them, and nobody was showing up. So now they've <laughs> now they're forced to sell like their tickets on Groupon. <laughs> Groupon. What is that? Is that like uh, you get that in the mail, right? Groupon? No. There's a no. website for it. There's a, a website for it. There's a website. It's a website? Or a website of, or an app. You're thinking of those packages no, to that, get that's, with all the coupons. Yeah, that's, a, that's the next it's thing. It's like the online equivalent of that. A coupon, yeah. 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 Well, that's next. In, in your mailbox, you're going to see you know tickets to <laughs> 20% off to Bill and Hillary in concert. Door-to-door salesman. <laughs> yeah. In concert, they're calling it. Devil with the blue dress, blue dress on. She's the devil with the blue dress on. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still don't even know what they do. Anyway, so they, they've they've taken the uh, the prices down from a hundred. <laughs> now they were down like uh, they were then were seventy. Now I'm seeing that there were one ticket was being sold for six dollars and fifty five cents <laughs> during the final minutes of their Toronto event. Th- that's less than a movie. That's like a Happy Meal. Oh, that's like a man. Subway sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you can go see Bill and Hillary do whatever they do for less than you would pay for uh, fast food. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I think we're starting to see now why she didn't win the election. Holy crap. And they're doing it in Canada. They're figuring, okay, well, you yeah, know. Start out soft, soft yeah, opening. Right, so, soft opening. Yeah, and he liked that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love a soft opening. Are you kidding me? How can you beat that? But they decided they're going to do it in Canada. Where gonna, they were saying, like, you know, everybody loves you guys in Canada. Right. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see the turnout. Oh, my God. The mistake he made was bringing her along. I bet you he could have at least sold out about 70% of those places. I tell you what, you put me on stage there with all the chicks from the hottest strip club, and I guarantee we'd sell that thing out. <laughs> Let me do my thing. <laughs> She's killing it. She's killing me. It's a ball and chain. Let me go, let me go on my own. I would yeah. have loved to have been at that pitch session. I mean, <laughs> I would imagine if he was Bill, the last thing he'd want to do is yeah. you know, get stuck with her for six months on the road. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Because, you know, there's like the meet and greet, and that's when he gets his hands on, you know, whoever is back there. And she's right there. He's right there looking C- at him. See blocking him. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's just the whole thing is very funny because I saw some photos of it, and uh, it, it looked like um, it looked like it like a fog hat reunion tour. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, who's going to go see, like, a band from the 70s? I'd rather go see fog hat. Yeah, I'd rather see them. <laughs> At least they'd be entertained. Yeah. All right. So speaking of uh, concerts and tours and all that, so uh, Bruce Springsteen's very successful Broadway show has come to an end. You want to talk about tickets being sold? Th- this is the opposite of what we just talked about. I think the tickets for Bruce Springsteen on Broadway were going, I think in the beginning was like, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks for a decent. Uh, they were being, because, you know, they were sold out immediately. They were being sold online. In the like 
like ten thousand dollars. Jeez. Wow. Ten thousand dollars to see you to you know to get a good seat right up front. Ten grand. For ten grand, Bruce Springsteen coming to my house <laughs> and he's gonna sing and cook dinner. And help deliver your baby. Right, for ten grand. Do all the jobs Americans don't want to do. Right. <laughs> right. He's gonna do a little lawn lawn work for ten thousand dollars. That's one of those situations that's like an auction. You know, when you win the auction. Right. But uh, but people would pay it. <laughs> people would pay it. I'm hearing all sorts of stories that that uh, it was, you know, most of the, if you're from New York, New Jersey, from the tri-state area up there, it's, you know, he's the guy. He's God. He's God, well, pretty much, my yeah. My wife's from New Jersey. I got to tell you, on on, uh, on the presets, the uh, Springsteen stuff is number one. Yeah. That's the first button. Yeah, but, it, but, it, but this is the way to do it. He was very smart about it because he could have traveled around the country doing more shows. That's, I mean, he's getting up there. He's almost 70. Well, that's actually expensive. Touring yeah. on is very, very expensive. You got a lot of people, yeah. a lot of equipment, yeah. a lot of food and lodging. This way, he's in you know, he's one location. Right. And I think it's like an unplugged, right? I mean, I don't think he's got a band. No, just him, so, him, a microphone, a stool, and a guitar. And then he brings his wife out. They do a song together. Maybe but that's it, where Bill and Hillary got the idea. <laughs> maybe they went to that show. Yeah. Thought, you know. Baby, we were born to love. Maybe I start to maybe get some people in the seats and we do some Springsteen songs. Yeah, no, but here's the thing, though. Um, you know, he tells a story about his life because, you know, he wrote the book and the whole thing. It's very intimate. And uh, the rumor that I heard that, that people would go to these shows and they would hear in the background, they hear whimpering. When he would do Thunder Road, you would hear, like, whimpering in the audience. And you think, oh, okay, what's going on there? It's not women. Dudes. Guys would cry. Mm-hmm. When they would hear Springsteen do Thunder Road, it was like one of the three songs that make guys that, that makes guys cry. Thunder Road is one. Desperado by the Eagles is two, and Cats in the Cradle. All three of them are uh, never miss getting guys to cry. But uh, now they're saying that uh, since this thing has come to a close and he's made a fortune, the good news is now you can see it about as up close as possible. It's on Netflix Sunday night. I understand, will be the debut of the Bruce Springsteen Broadway show. They filmed it. Netflix special. You get a Netflix uh, Netflix special. They're, they're saying that they're so close on him, you can basically see the dental work. <laughs> <laughs> His recent dental work is that close. Hmm. Uh, it's pretty amazing. They said it's almost like um, you know having a, a, a hologram, like a Springsteen hologram in your living room. So if you have like one of those big uh, screen TVs, it works beautifully. Speaking of holograms, so... You guys have seen, have you seen the uh, Roy Orbison? They're, they've got a company that's actually uh, doing concerts, and they bring back these dead uh, you know, artists. The first one was Tupac, wasn't it? No, no, no. I think the first one that they did, they just kicked it off in actually in Florida, Roy Orbison. And I actually saw some, some uh, video of it. You want to see how close it is? Because you're like, okay, if I'm going to spend, I don't know, $20 to go see... You know, the Roy Orbison hologram. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see what it looks like. So I saw a video of it. Here's what it looks like. The, the, first of all, they introduce him, and they were like, uh, they're like, uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, coming to the stage, Roy Orbison. And the crowd's going, and then he rises, like, from the orchestra pit. It's just, like, he comes out of nowhere. And it's just... It's it's the sunglasses, and here's what it looks like. It looks like it, it's a cross between a solid form and a transparent form. It's what you would think a ghost would look like. <laughs> it is freaking creepy. The ghost of Roy Orbison. Yeah, no, but 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 uh, it, but people are there, and he's singing all the songs, and it's it's weird because it's in 3D, so you can see dimension dimensions, wow. and it's like it's it's bizarre. So they're, they're I guess they're having success with it. And oh, good guy! Could you imagine the audience of that that show? Especially in Florida. Oh man! <laughs> All right, so the the next one they're going to do is Amy Winehouse. Young man, could you tighten it down? It's a little loud. <laughs> yeah, over here. yeah. Uh, Amy Winehouse hologram is going on tour in 2019. That's going to be very creepy, just the way she died. You know what I mean? And seeing that, uh, but it, it just looks like a ghost. It it, it is. It's just it's creepy. So they, this is a whole thing that once this thing becomes really popular. Then you're going to get, you know, uh, you could do the big three. You could do Michael Jackson, Prince, Elvis, you know. 
You know, it's Curps of Belusa, you know, whatever you want to call it. And you could probably make a lot of money with it. So once this thing really takes hold and they see how successful it is and how easy it is, um, you're going to be able to actually uh, uh, in in the future, and it's actually working now. They're they're considering doing it. You can actually do your own eulogy at your funeral in hologram. Oh, jeez. There's a guy by the name. His name is Carl Minardo, and he's already spent money on this. There's a company in West Palm Beach that's offering an eight to ten minute personal eulogy hologram. <laughs> so they will they will do a video of you. And um, you can do your own eulogy. And so they did one for him. And by the way, it's pretty expensive. It's between fifteen grand and $38,000 Good Lord. to produce this three-day uh, hologram. Well, I mean, if you, if you know you die and you got some money lying around, <laughs> you know, what, what are you worried about? You're, you're on your way out. So he's taped it before. You know, uh, he's pre-taped it. And uh, so he's got this now. And he's, he's in a martini. He's like in a smoking jacket. Yeah, he's going. He's going kind of Hugh Hefner on us. Got the captain's hat. Yeah, I mean the whole thing. And he's basically just saying, "Hey, listen, for those of you who are here, uh, thank you for being in my life. I know I can't be here in person to say all the things I want to say to you, but I thought this would be the really nice way to uh, say goodbye." And by the way, I just want you to know, instead of naming you in my will, I made this hologram. Right, right. None of you are getting any money because I spent all of it on this stupid hologram. (laughs) Creepy city. All right. When we come back, uh, I'm going to get into a little bit of uh, this National Enquirer situation where the the owner of the National Enquirer. Now, once uh, Donald Trump's very tight friend has decided that uh, he's going in the way of Michael Cohen and all the others, do a little flip, and we'll get into that coming up. This is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson, right here. Warning, no snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. 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 This is Barsky Radio. I am Barsky sitting in for Chad Benson. Hope you're doing well. So uh, Michael Cohen, the uh, former fixer for our president, and uh, some saying uh, ex- extreme liar, sleazebag attorney, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he was saying that uh, in the latest interview with George Stephanopoulos and others that uh, our president was actually in the room. And he's the one who ordered the payments, the hush payments, uh, to Stormy Daniels and this Karen McDougal, who he had a relation with. Stormy Daniels was like, a, I don't know, it was like a one-night stand. But this Karen McDougal, I guess, according to her, it was like a year-long relationship. So uh, it was him, it was Michael Cohen, and it was the owner, the publisher of the National Enquirer, a company called AMI. His name is the CEO. His, his name is David Pecker. If you don't see the irony and the humor here, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have to, doesn't even have to write this joke. And everybody, and everybody, you know, when when they heard the story, they were like, "Seriously, really? That's almost as good as Anthony Weiner." I mean, really. <laughs> so uh, apparently, they have a um, they have they have a, a situation that they use from time to time called uh, catch and kill. They get a story, they can kill it uh, if somebody you know they, they exchanges money. You know, they, they they're able to do that. So they did it with uh, Stormy Daniels, and they did it with this Karen McDougal for 150 k There are some people that say that this guy Pecker did the same thing with Arnold Schwarzenegger, that he was going after Arnold, yeah. and then Arnold came to visit and came up with a healthy payment, and all of a sudden uh, articles in the Enquirer started coming out in favor yeah. of Schwarzenegger. So apparently this guy has been doing this for a while. This is you know, this is blackmail, basically. It's shakedown. It's, well, it's, it's old-school shakedown. There, right? are, there are. He, he claims... He's responsible for winning the election for Trump. Could be. You know, and I'm sure he had a lot to do with it because, I mean, you, if you look at the covers. Well, you know what? I disagree with that. I'll tell you why. Well, he, yeah, he helped. Let's put it that well, way. Well, here's the thing. When the Access Hollywood tape came out and Trump was talking about grabbing women by the hoo-ha, right? Right, right. Right? And that did nothing to you're, his no, poll. You're right. Nobody cared. Yeah. yeah. Well, to the polls. I was to his poll. <laughs> still on the David Pecker thing. But it did nothing. The, the supporters were so 
they were they, they wanted so badly for a change, and they were like, I don't care what this guy's done. Right. We're going to elect him, right? So I don't think if this stuff even came up. But see, back then Trump had no idea he was that he was that popular. Right. He had no idea, so he thought, okay, this is going to kill my campaign. So David Pecker and Donald Trump, close friends, uh, both hang out at Mar a Lago in Palm Beach. You know, very very tight. Well. You know, all these tight friends, all these people like Michael Cohen, I take a bullet for him. David Pecker, he's my best buddy. You see what happens once you get uh, in the room with prosecutors and people that could send you away or, or you know, hold you accountable. You don't want any of that nonsense. So they're saying then that that, uh, that Pecker is flipped on the <laughs> flipping Pecker oh, on the Trumpster. And somebody this, needs to rewrite these headlines. And, and this isn't and then this isn't shocking either. You know, I mean, you would, you would, you know, this stuff is going to happen when, when uh, these stories arise, and especially when you've got special prosecutors, and you've got also, you know, anytime someone can, nobody wants uh, 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 like prosecutors or FBI or people like that sniffing around into your business, especially this business, you know, the National Enquirer or AMI, all those places. So anyway, so, so this is what happened, and what they have, what they, what they did with this Karen McDougal is very interesting. They guaranteed her appearances on, on publication covers. They own a bunch of, AMI owns a bunch of magazines. And they gave her a, a fitness column in exchange for her giving away her life rights to the story. Uh, That's how they did it. Uh, so it, it, it's kind of a catch and kill arrangement. They also gave her money. According to a letter from the prosecutors to AMI, uh, the company entered an agreement to acquire limited rights with a model uh, about her relationship with the then married man in exchange for 150, which was Trump, the mar- then married man, and so that's kind of how it happened. And um, you know, David Pecker now is cooperating because he's got immunity. They're not going to go after him for anything. I just have to think a guy who grows up with that name is either going to be really successful or just have years of therapy. Like you know what I mean? It like can be both. Yeah, I, maybe both. <laughs> it's got to be tough to have that name. Is when you're a kid. Like now, it's like who cares? You know. Same thing with Anthony Weiner. Mm. Like an Anthony Weiner, and, and 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 it's so ironic and apropos what he got busted for. <laughs> it's like Pecker with Trump with his pe- you know and Weiner and it's it's it, it, like I said you just you can't you know you can't write it. This is the kind of script that most of the people in Hollywood would have thrown yeah. out if you tried to pitch it to them. Yeah, it's like it's way over the top. So talking about uh, changing your name, okay? Because seriously, these guys didn't change their name. They could have. There's a kid, he's an 11 year old kid by the name of Joshua Trump. He's no relation, and I guess he was getting bullied at school by the kids. So uh, you know, he, I guess he went to his mom. He goes, "I want to, I want to change my last name. You know, I don't want to be Joshua Trump. You know, I want to be somebody else. I'm getting bullied." And she was trying to say, "Oh, you know, be proud of your name." So. I guess they were thinking about maybe uh, for him adopting his stepdad's uh, dad's surname, which is Berto. And he goes, no, 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 no. If I'm going to change my name, I want to change it to something that I know I'm going to be able to get some mileage out of. Can we change it to Pence? Just, <laughs> just in case. Just in case. All right, this is the Chad Benson Show. This is Barsky Radio sitting in. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is not Chad Benson. He's got the uh, time off. Actually, this is Barsky. This is Barsky Radio. And uh, thank you for being here. So the uh, big news coming out of the White House is that Trump has named Mick Mulvaney acting White House Chief of Staff, replacing John Kelly. Uh, Mick Mulvaney was the Director of Office of Management and Budget and now he's going to be filling in for uh, until they can figure out what the hell they're going to do. Well, um, there are another a number of big names. I guess they've got to whittle down to it was supposedly ten people they're looking at, and Trump's saying there's like five people on his short list, and they're whittling it down. But one of the people who was mentioned was Chris Christie, <laughs> and Chris Christie, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, 
showed up at the White House, had a meeting, and then I find out, I'm thinking, okay, well, this is obviously he's going to get the gig. Because this guy's been trying to get in. Anything. In anything. In yeah. Any gig. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to actually get into the kitchen. But, uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. No, no. But, he, um, he doesn't fit. <laughs> Yeah, I, he's the only guy I know who had that lap band surgery, and the lap, the, the lap band was like, I don't, "No mas, <laughs> no mas." Uh, anyway, so but uh, but so so Chris Christie, I guess he withdrew himself from consideration today. So I wonder what that was all about. He went there. For, why would you go for the meeting, sit down with Trump, and then say, uh, "No, I don't want to take this job." Maybe he had, maybe on the way over he'd really had uh, he thought about it. He was thinking, okay, this guy went over two. He went with this Ryan Priebus guy. Then he goes with John Kelly, a guy who's been to war, and he <laughs> even left. I don't know. I thought uh, Chris Christie would be a good uh, chief of staff, so he's not uh, going to be taking it. And then the other rumor was that uh, Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Which is an interest. That's a whole interesting dynamic there too, because Chris Christie, when he was the uh, Attorney General of New Jersey, prosecuted Jared Kushner's dad, Charles Kushner, <laughs> and sent him to prison. So I have to think that maybe I don't know. Maybe he was Trump was thinking about it, or uh, who knows what. But that uh, that would be would have been really weird. Chris Christie getting chief of staff and has to see Jared Kushner. I think that's one of the reasons why Chris Christie didn't get a gig. Well, there's a rumor I saw maybe online. One reason why he didn't want it. A rumor I saw online that was part of the reason why Christie might have passed was apparently because there's some kind of uh, Kushner blackmail thing that's going to break soon about him blackmailing other people in the administration or something like that, and that the chief of staff would have to handle it. And I don't know. Really? Where'd you see this? Uh, I have to try and find it again. It was. A Little bit ago, I saw someone on Twitter. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't don't, don't search for it. it. Just seems to just look. I mean, look, there are a million different rumors that come out of that place. You don't know what to believe. What not oh, for to sure. Believe. You know. So, um, but I don't know. There's no way he's going to pick his son-in-law. That would be like the moral equivalent of like circling the wagons. You know, bringing it all into the family. Yeah, he's not going to do that. No, he's not going to do that. All right. So, you want to hear who's uh, actually wants to do it? Jose Canseco. <laughs> Wait, the bat guy? <laughs> yes, Jose Canseco, the ball player, the uh, bruise brother, or whatever he called it himself. Jose Canseco. Didn't this guy believe that time? Didn't he? Wasn't there a weird thing from I don't know, maybe a year ago? We were talking about where he he actually believed that the that you could travel in time. I think <laughs> he he believed in time travel, and he believed that there, there were people here from another. Whenever it was, I mean, this guy. I mean, this is it's clearly. I mean. He believed that you could travel through time because he was told that by the lizard people. <laughs> you know, if you got to pick, like, you know, if you think, like, what happens when they send you down here, are you going to get brains or looks? <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people get lucky to get both. The, clearly, this guy didn't. I don't even know if he has a brain. Anyway, so he's saying that he believes he could be a good chief of staff. Uh, I, I was, he had to be on one of these celebrity apprentice shows. That's the only thing I'm thinking. Uh, let me go to fake Trump here. Uh, fake Trump wants to jump. Yes, fake Trump. Well, listen, can I say a couple of things? I want to straighten it out. First of all, well, I, I, I do appreciate Jose Canseco's interest in the chief of staff job, believe me. Uh, no offense to Jose, but he seems a little a little out there, if you know what I'm talking about. I need someone who's loyal, someone I can count on, and someone, most importantly, someone very stable. That's why I'm going to make this announcement. I know I just announced a uh, interim uh, a chief of staff. I'm going to announce right now, I'm going to short this down to a couple <laughs> candidates. First one, I need someone who's going to be having my back, someone who is very, very stable, someone who's a very smart guy. First one, I'm looking at Kanye West. <laughs> He's proven to be very loyal, most importantly, extremely emotionally and mentally stable. That's very important for this job. Uh, plus, he's, his knowledge of American history, and especially the Constitution, is second to none. That whole 13th Amendment thing, he was really on top of something right there, if you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to say he's first on the list. All right. Okay, well, there you go. That's first. And uh, anybody else? Second candidate I'm considering is another great, super stable person. You're going to love this. Of course, I'm referring to Mr. Buddy Holly himself, Gary Busey. <laughs> Gary Busey, as you know, front runner on Celebrity Apprentice number four, but he blew it as project manager. Uh, that being said, I was really impressed with the way he handled that whack job Meatloaf. Remember that? When Meatloaf had the on-air meltdown? 
Oh, that's one of the greatest arguments ever in the history of television. Yeah, that was, it was good stuff, but that convinced me Gary's the perfect guy for this job. If he can handle meatloaf, he could clearly handle my wife, Melody, which he gets angry with me. <laughs> Melody. <laughs> uh, sir, do you know that uh, it's Melania? Uh, you're splitting hairs now. Melania, Melody, what the hell's the difference? <laughs> All I'm saying is if he can handle her, he can handle anybody. So I'll have my uh, announcement, and I'll make a decision pretty soon. All right. Well, there you go. So uh, just real quick, Jose Canseco. Yes was on the same season as Gary Busey and Meatloaf. He was on season right. of, of The Apprentice 4 or whatever it was. Yeah. Listen to this. this is great, though. Okay, This is Jose uh, Jose's Twitter account, mm-hmm. December 12th. Yeah. This is how he applied for the job. Yeah. Hey, little buddy, <laughs> at Real Donald Trump. Right. You need a brash brother for chief of staff. Got a secret reorg plan already. Also worried about you looking more like a Twinkie every day. I will buff you up. Daily workouts. DM me. Now, now wait. Yeah. October 9th. Uh huh. Hey, little buddy at Real Donald Trump. I'm interested in United Nations leadership. DM me for ideas and confidential 90 day plan. Wait a second. Hashtag ready now. Right, so, so basically, he was trying to get a job while. John Kelly was the chief of staff. He knew he, something was coming. He knew the yeah. He knew the and he also he knew the United Nations gig was coming up. <laughs> wow. So he was applying for that. Uh, maybe he's gone to something with the time travel. <laughs> maybe he kind of knew. He kind of knows what's coming in the future. Maybe maybe we're all crazy and he's the smart one. You know, someone pulled me aside once and said, "You know, you guys do a lot of Trump stuff and you seem to goof on him a lot. Uh, where, where, where do you stand on him?" And I and I've said it from the very beginning. I want this guy to win. I want him to do well. I love the guy. I can't get enough of him. He's been the savior of talk radio, and uh, I don't want him going anywhere. President and for life, I said. President for life. That's yes. why I decided to uh, you know pen a little song for him. And this is how I feel. I, I there's so much about him that you gotta love. How could you not love the guy? He gets up early to watch Fox and Friends. He loves to tweet, and it never ends. He doesn't care who he offends. That's why the Donald is a Trump. Doesn't like CNN. Calls them fake news And the rest of the press He loves to abuse Never spoke reefer Or even drank booze That's why the Donald is a Trump Hates that free Fresh wind in his hair Cause it takes lots of care Windy day, lots of hairspray Hates Jim Acosta Says he's a chump That's why the Donald is a Trump His wife Melania Gave birth to a son Several months later Trump had some fun with Stormy Daniels. In two minutes, he's done. That's why the Donald is a Trump. Says there was no collusion all of the time. Says he's not guilty of committing a crime. Thinks Michael Cohen is the worst kind of backstabbing slime. That's why the Donald is a Trump. Dems win the House. The tables have turned. Now things are different. Donald's concerned about revealing. His tax returns. That's why the Donald is a Trump. He hates that free, fresh wind in his hair. It 
takes lots of care. Windy day, lots of hairspray. Hank slumming in the White House. Says it's a dump. That's why the Donald. That's why the Donald. That's why the Donald is a Trump. It's climbing up the charts with a bullet, everybody. <laughs> All right, uh, enough Tom Fuller. When we come back, uh, the Trumpster is taking a shot at Fox News. That's his network. Why? And uh, I hate to tell you, but the First Lady's uh, approval ratings are dropping 11 points, according to a CNN poll. What the hell does that mean? Don't. It's a CNN poll. And also, uh, who's going to be uh, hosting the Oscars? We're going to have a host? I have an idea. I'll share it with you. I am Barsky. This is Barsky Radio on the Chad Benson Show. Sniffling, sneezing, stuffy head thing going on. Time for your daily dose of vitamin chat. This isn't vitamin chat. This is actually Barsky, and this is Barsky Radio. And welcome to the program. So uh, a lot of Trump stuff today. I I know. I mean, I can't help it. I mean, it's it's what, what people are talking about and what's coming out of the uh, uh, top of the news. Um, our president took a rare shot at Fox News. What does that mean? This happened yesterday. That's his network. That's what he wakes up to watch. He watches, watches Fox and Friends. So he takes a shot at Fox News. He's griping about the new poll that came out that said 42%, I'm sorry, 52% of voters disapprove of the job he's doing, while 46 approve. And then he said, his quote was this, frankly, Fox has always given me a bad poll. I don't know why that is. <laughs> I've what are you that, talking about? I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was usually from everybody else that worked there at, at Fox. How many what, jokes what, like this are we getting off of one Yeah, show? one of them. Yeah, we got tons of jokes uh, uh-huh. on this topic. So, um, yeah, I mean, because he, he did some sort of a uh, an interview with one of their hosts, uh, Harris Faulkner. And during the interview, he said that uh, he, he's not, he doesn't get the... That's all he does is get good press from Fox. Stick with it. Don't don't you know kick a gift a gift horse in the mouth, dude. Don't bite the hand that feeds and all those other right. cliches. Yeah, I mean you've already pissed off CNN. They're at war with you. I mean the only I don't th- I don't think he even talks about MSNBC because who the hell watches it? Well, yeah, you know, waste of time. Well, I mean, do you ever watch see uh, MSNBC uh, fake Trump? I watch it sometimes, and I got to tell you something. I do like that guy uh, Rachel Maddow. <laughs> I don't know why he's got a, uh, a girl's name, but. <laughs> He's a good-looking man. <laughs> All right, so um, I have to think that uh, according to this, I mean, Fox is just trying to be fair and balanced, I guess, is what they say they are. And they can't come. If they come out with uh, with every other poll that's come out about him, is uh, he's never had a higher approval rating than the disapproval rating. So you gotta be you got to be honest about it, I guess. You can't be, you know, uh, pissed off about it. So anyway, so and, and and you know if anybody shouldn't be concerned about polls, it's him. I don't think I think he he, he, uh, he really doesn't care. No, I think he cares when it's Fox. Man. He cares. I don't know if he cares about this. Melania's uh, approval rating dropped eleven points in a CNN poll, but that's CNN. Right. Well, that was also Melania, not Melanie. So. Right. That's not the real. Which one is the actual stand-in? Which one is the We're double? We're still trying to figure it out. Okay. So anyway, so she suffered a double-digit blow. <laughs> To her approval rating, according to CNN, this is released yesterday, <laughs> the number of respondents who said that they held a very favorable view of the First Lady dropped 11 points relative to October when 54%. Uh, like, how do you give her an unfavorable, this poor woman? They must have taken those Christmas direc- decorations really seriously. Yeah, the those, red trees. They were really turned off by those red trees. I guess. Her, she just well, plummeted. Yeah. Trump detractors will downvote anything related to Trump. It doesn't matter if it is Melania yeah. or Ivanka oh or the other God. people in his family that some people might look at favorably. They, As long as it's got a Trump name to it, like the kid that we talked about earlier. Joshua, he wants to change his last name. Yeah, to, to Frank. Yeah, All right, Like I said, I don't think she even cares about this, but it's just interesting. All right, so uh, I guess the Oscars is another thing that people seem to be talking about who the host is going to be. And I say, who cares? You don't need a host. Here's what you need. You need to cut it down to one half hour. There's your show. You want ratings? That's what you do. You just do the the, the big awards, best actor, best actress, blah 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 blah. You don't even need a host. But so there, are, you know, Kevin Hart had to step down because of some homophobic tweets from you know like three years ago or four years ago. There was some suggestion Wanda Sykes should do it. She'd be great. Yeah, she'd be good. Jerry Seinfeld's uh, chiming on it said, said that Kevin Hart's Oscar 
withdrawal following this uh, homophobic tweet is the Academy's loss. I guess he's a big Kevin Hart fan. He says he literally likes Kevin. Why doesn't he do it? Seinfeld. You know what I mean? I could just, he's, yeah. I could, I could just see that. I think it's very important to do best actor. No. <laughs> He would he would be he doesn't want anything to do with that nonsense he doesn't need to do any of it so anyway he's voting to you know for the for to be like Kevin Hart to, he's trying to talk Kevin Hart to go back and do it and be great for his his career the the person that they're saying would be really good and I agree is Ken Jong the guy that was in the Hangover he was in Crazy Rich Asians oh, yeah. they've oh. never had an Asian host he's on like one of those you can be a star shows now isn't he. Uh, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I think he's on the he's on the the masked singer or something. Like that. Oh my god! Judge. Is that the stupidest thing? The masked, <laughs> the masked singer. singer, right? Give me a break! Right, right, right. Good lord! They're, yeah, talk about whipping a dead horse. Yeah, well, but they got to come up with some sort of idea. Every like yeah. the singing shows are very popular. If, if I, I was on that show, I'd wear a mask too. Yeah, right. I, I think it was a Japanese show that carried over to the, to oh, the yeah. states. It always Good starts lord. over there. Good lord. So I think they're looking for him. They're saying that he might be the guy to do it. Like I said. Here's what you do. You don't have any any host, and you just do it in a half hour. The ratings will be through the roof. You go longer than a half hour, it's a dead deal. All right, Barsky Radio, that's us for Chad Benson on the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Welcome to the program. I am Barsky. This is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. And I hope you're having a, uh, a great, uh, great day. Everything's going well in your life. Getting ready for uh, Christmas, the shopping, all that stuff. Um, you know, enough with the, you know what, leave stuff alone. You know what? I'm I'm kind of a traditionalist in a lot of ways. You know, I like my Santa fat with a white beard and a and a white hair and the red suit, right? There, I guess they did some sort of survey with um, hipsters, <laughs> uh, millennials. We're not all hipsters. Not all, just ninety percent of you. <laughs> and they want to make Santa uh, a gender neutral. What does that mean? That means that they do not identify as a he or a she. Okay. They are non-binary. Well, there goes the beard. Yeah. So well, I mean, there are <laughs> women that have beards, so you can have a non-binary uh, individual with a beard. There are a lot of women with beards. Wasn't Liza Minnelli <laughs> for many years? Did she have a beard? <laughs> or maybe it was the other way around. I don't know. I knew we'd get around to that sooner or yeah. later. Um, no, no, no. Santa is not gender neutral. Santa is Santa. He's an old man. He lives in the North Pole, and I don't just leave it that way. That just cuts Mrs. Santa right out of the action. Right. Well, not necessarily. You can have a non-binary individual that's attracted to a other sexes. A non-binary individual. Uh, yeah. Female Santas they're talking about. Uh, not everything has to be gender neutral all, all the time. Ever since, uh, you know, we've had some issues with people not, uh, you know, not knowing exactly who they are or how they were born or what they are or, or identifying with another gender. Now, now don't, don't pull Santa into it I don't th- unless he wants to, unless he's been lying all these years. He's been a, uh, a fat white uh, guy with a beard trapped in a, another uh, person's body. I don't know. Well, no, that that's uh, that's transgender. Oh, that's not quite the same thing. Well, maybe that, maybe that's next. <laughs> transgender Santa. I don't know. He won't know what bathroom to use. Yeah, they want to make him slimmer. They want to give him some tattoos. I don't mind a little bit of ink on a Santa. I love those, like the <laughs> pictures of like the Russian Santa Clauses with the the tattoos. They look like a, a bit of a gangster. Yeah, I don't know. It just all, the whole thing is goofy. Just leave, there are certain things. Just leave it alone. Let it be. I kind of like my Santa to have kind of a Billy Bob Thornton kind of the bad Santa. <laughs> yeah, bad yeah. Santa. <laughs> all right. So uh, CBS. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Ever since Les Moonves had to step down because of the sexual harassment uh, allegations and all of that. Not, none of it really has been proven yet. He claims it was all consensual and all that stuff. But the woman he's married to, Julie Chen, she had to leave that uh, talk show of hers, the, the talk, because that was the whole show. 
the show was doing like you know top stories, and that's what they they would gossip. They were yentas. They would sit there and just you know it was like the the, the poor man's uh, view or the knockoff view, whatever it was. So she had to leave the show. She was like the host of it because her husband was the the story. Well, the, no, the husband was was the guy running CBS, so he gave her the show, gave her that one and Big Brother. So since all this stuff came out, she had to leave that show. So supposedly she's getting back in the uh, Big Brother show. But anyway, it says here she's spending more time focusing on a relationship with her husband, Les Moonves, and she's not buying any of it. I mean, well, what, what is she going to say? I have to think privately. There's <laughs> ashtrays being thrown all over that, that, that mansion. You know, like, how do you stick with it? Like, how do you stick with him? Well, it makes it easier when you have a mansion, so you don't ever have to see him while you're at home. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's probably moved up at this point. Or he's in the pool house or something like that. You know, they have kids together. I understand that. But when every week there's something new coming out, there's some really bad stuff on this guy coming out, all right? So the latest one, Sybil Shepard is claiming that she had a sitcom that was canceled by Les Moonves after she rejected his sexual advances. Uh, she did an interview on Sirius XM's The Michelle Collins Show, she told the host that the show uh, would have been um, running for like five more seasons, uh, and, you know, if she was able to, you know, if she was able to, uh, uh, I don't know, swallow her pride, so to speak. It was very ambitious of her to assume that she'd get five more seasons out of what sitcom that we've never heard of before. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, I love Sybil Shepherd, but I don't recall her being in a sitcom. Yeah, no, she was in something called Sybil. I think that was uh, oh. after Moonlight. She was in like Sybil. I think that's what it was called. Anyway, so what happened was. Uh, according to her, they're sitting around and you know he's drinking, and he says, um, "Well, why don't you let me take you home?" And she says, oh. "I said no, I got a ride. I had my car outside. A good friend of mine was a off-duty LA cop." Then Shepard said that night, uh, after that night, the show suddenly began getting notes about what the character, what her character should do on these episodes, and it was Moonves sending the notes. Like, uh, you know, I think she needs to do this. And, you know, all of a sudden he's, like, micromanaging it. And then apparently uh, it just it just went south after that. And she was not asked back to do the show. And she says, you know, because I, uh, I didn't give in to him. So, I mean, I don't think she has a lawsuit here, does she? Because this, this Alicia Dushku. Wait, what? No, that's her name. <laughs> Elisa, uh, Eliza, or is it Eliza? Eliza Dushku. That's her name. She's an actress. She was in like... Um, yeah, I thought you had Eliza wrong. Eliza. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were laughing at. Oh, that what you were laughing at? <laughs> yeah, what were you thinking? I don't know. Uh, she just settled with CBS. They paid her a settlement. Do you have any idea what that is, what the settlement is? Wait to hear what it is. Wait to hear why she settled, how she settled. Okay. She was on this show called Bull starring Michael Weatherly. This guy was on, like, CSI, whatever the CSI was. Anyway, I guess she was sexually harassed by this guy on the set. This girl was in Buffy. She was in the dollhouse. She, she's, like, 37 years old. She's been around. She was playing a criminal defense lawyer on the show. So she said that she's on the set with this guy Weatherly, the show's lead, and he made jokes about uh, a threesome, threatened to spank her in front of the cast, uh, she said she felt uh, disgusted and violated, and she approached the producer Glenn Gordon Carone, or Karen, I think his name is, and uh, and uh, who said that he would talk to Weatherly with her, and then Weatherly then said that uh, you know he uh, didn't realize he was out of line, he was just having fun, you know that kind of thing was wasn't serious, and then he says during the show I made some jokes mocking some lines on her script. He said, when Eliza told me that she wasn't comfortable with my language and attempted humor, I was mortified that I offended her. I immediately apologized. So he's, you know, covering his ass on this one. But you don't have to worry about it because CBS is, is paying her for the pain and suffering. The pain and suffering of, of uh, uh, getting, um, it wasn't even an insult. It was just like um, he was talking about threesomes. That, that was, you know, that was the pain and suffering. Really? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Any, uh, you want to take a guess at what, what her settlement was from CBS? Oh, God. For pain and suffering. By the way, she wasn't touched. Nothing happened. There was no, nothing. This is my favorite part of the show, and we make Ron squirm based on numbers. Say, take a guess. What, I hate. what did uh, she get as the settlement from CBS? I'm going to say five million. Five million? Karen, what do you I say? I have a feeling it's low. I feel like that's high. Um, I don't know. I'll go two. Two million. Two million. Nine point five million dollars. I told you. 
9.5 million. Good Lord. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, uh, uh, let me pray to uh, baby Jesus again. <laughs> Dear baby Jesus, <laughs> it's me again. Uh, you know, I already asked you if it's possible uh, to not impeach Trump and not put Mike Pence in there. That would be the death note to the show. Uh, one more quick little, um, if I could just ask you, in my next life, I'd like to come back as a very hot woman. <laughs> really good looking. <laughs> Very talented. That's all I ask. Thank you. Amen. All right, there you go. All set. Yeah, I'm all set. I'm all good to go for the next life. Uh, yeah, nine point five million dollars. Good lord. I mean, <laughs> we really we, it, listen. I I I know that guys get out of line, and I'm and I'm all about protecting women. I don't believe women should be harassed in the workplace. I don't believe they should. None of that. Okay, I get it. But the you know they say that the punishment should fit the crime. The payout should fit the harassment. <laughs> you know, I mean, like if somebody wanted to spank me or talk about spanking me and talk about threesomes, whatever, whatever, it is, I, I'd be sitting there going, "Bring it on!" That's you know, the, the cast register in my head just. <laughs> but how is she able to get that kind of a settlement? That's a huge settlement. She she'll never have to work again. She doesn't have to work again. It's craziness. Well, I mean, obviously she was, you know, either either uh, cast aside or whatever, but who cares? If just talking about spanking you gets you $9 million, imagine what actually spanking you would have I know, that's you. What I'm, like what I'm saying. You know, she should have been like, hey, you know, I'm going to need a spanking. She should have owned the network. <laughs> under, under her breath. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. Or, or she'd have some friend tell Michael, you know, she really likes to be spanked in front of people. <laughs> now we're talking $15 million. Surprise. Don't even let her know it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. And do it and really embarrass her. All right, so uh, speaking of CBS, there's uh, more stuff happening that's at the CBS morning uh, show. This is the show that used to have, since we're talking about sexual harassment, Charlie Rose. Oh. And Charlie Rose, uh, I believe they had to pay out three of the women. And then, you know, his harassment was much worse than this Michael Weatherly. What is it with these guys? I, who the hell is What you know, is going on? I don't know. I know it's like uh, the Fox News was the first, uh, then CBS. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah, both of these networks. And it's like the networks are worse than the uh, the film guy. Yeah. I don't think Fox was the first. I think it's just the first we found out about. Right. And I think that, honestly, it's not probably just these two. Yeah. I bet you every network out there has these stories. Oh, I'm and sure. But some I mean, of them are just better at keeping them under wraps. Yeah. I just don't get it. Or paying them off. But uh, so the CBS morning show has been always in third place in the morning ratings. And they had uh, Charlie Rose, and then, of course, he uh, was fired because of the sexual harassment stuff. So they put a show together of uh, uh, Gail King, who's Oprah Winfrey's uh, girl, I mean, her friend. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Nora O'Donnell, they're the anchors. And then they're joined by John uh, Dickerson. Okay? So it's one dude and two uh, women. What is that considered to be in the uh, Brett Kavanaugh definition? Is now, the Devil's Triangle is the two. Okay, got it. Stop. All right, so anyway, so they, they tried to uh, make uh, some ratings. They couldn't get ratings. They couldn't even come close to any sort of ratings. They couldn't get close to uh, GMA or the Today Show. So now they're supposedly blowing the whole thing up, and they're going to be replacing all three of them with, you know. Seriously? Here's what I would do. Get Matt Lauer back, <laughs> and then get this Kimberly Guilfoyle. No, she's another one that got fired. She got fired from Fox. Matt Lauer got uh, fired from NBC for the same stuff. Kimberly Guilfo uh, sending uh, 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 pictures, junk pictures around. So get these two together. You, you, you would know. have you would have to think that would be some good television, right? And you'd have to think they'd all be willing to work cheap. Yeah, I mean that in itself. Absolutely. Charlie, but it, Charlie Rose ain't doing nothing now, so. I would throw Charlie Rose into the yeah, mix, too, just the hell of it. I'd hire him back. Yeah, I'd hire all these people. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> right. I'd watch that. <laughs> Without a doubt. Okay, i got to play with some Kellyanne Conway audio from CNN. you got to hear this chick with Chris Cuomo. There's an interesting dynamic between Kellyanne Conway, uh, Conway who's a big uh, Trump uh, supporter and uh, fanatic and uh, enabler and apologizer, all those things. She is, you know, like a fixer. And then her husband, who's just the opposite. I'll tell you about that. Coming up, I'm Barsky. This is Barsky Radio for the Chad Benson Show right here.
No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? I am Barsky for Chad Benson. This is Barsky Radio. Welcome to the program. Hope you're enjoying it. All right. So last night, <laughs> this is craziness. Do you guys watch Chris Cuomo? <laughs> you know, he's not bad. I'm not a big CNN fan. I mean, I watch some of the stuff, but I see a lot of the stuff the day after. He likes to mix it up uh, with uh, whoever, you know, is on there. He's not afraid to get in people's faces. But Kellyanne Conway, I mean, I got I to gotta really give her credit. I don't know which one is more of the... Who's who's better at apologizing for Trump? Is it Kellyanne or is it uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders? Oh, They're about the same. That's a tough. It's race, a tough right? one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think Sarah Huckabee Sanders. It's her job to apologize for him. It's really not Kellyanne's. Yeah, I think it is. Kellyanne's so better. She should get extra credit. Yeah, but this, this is what she's a White House advisor. Okay. Yeah, so, but she's not supposed to be the the face or the the voice of it, right? No, well, she has been. To me, she has been. Anyway, she spent thirty nine minutes on CNN last night. Wow. They should give her her own show <laughs> at this point. She was on with Chris Cuomo, and uh, they got into it, and uh, she called Chris Cuomo. Uh, she said that uh, he had slurred uh, Trump by calling him a liar. That's not a slur, is it? When did that become a slur? Anyway, so uh, you want to hear some of it because they go back and forth, back and forth. She calls him Christopher, which is uh, you know, <laughs> it's a very passive aggressive way of trying to put him in his place. And that's it's like what, a mom thing. That's a that's exactly why she's doing it. But just just listen to some of it left from last night. Wait a second. This is this is TV. You can't convict somebody, indict somebody. I don't want to convict anybody. I want the truth. It's not going to happen. And I want the president well, to keep himself network, out of harm's way. You're telling by America what the truth is now, things. and you're out of bounds. No, he's not. No, 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 no. You just like to say the president lies, so then it goes viral. I actually just don't cut like it. it. If no, you Kelly really Ann, honest to God, this, I don't like it. He said I today, really wish I didn't ever have to say he it. He said today that he did not, he never directed Michael Cohen to break the law. That's what the president said. And Michael you're telling Cohen the viewers right and now David who Pecker expect you to be anti-Trump, your that. viewers. No, they actually get frustrated with second. me because they so, believe we're too balanced on the show. They don't want me to have you on. No, they don't want me to have no, any no, on from the administration. They're mad at you for having me on. Right. And you know why that is, right? They don't want you to have me on. And my Aunt Rita said today, I don't know why you go on with him. He's not nice to you, but she's she's watching. Come I'm sure. On. Christopher, listen, the, your viewers don't your viewers don't Tough want me to fair. have me, you know don't I'm want to have from me a, on for a very a simple place, reason. Honest. Hold on. Can you please let me speak? Go ahead. Please. Christopher, they don't want you to have me on for a very simple reason. They accept, if not expect, you and the rest of CNN to be anti-Trump all day long. And you know it. You don't have the same viewership no. that CNN no, wants. Hey, hey, stop right there. Right. She has a point, though. I mean, CNN is anti-Trump. They're, they're, they're at war. It's the anti-Trump network. I get that. It's the antithesis of Fox. Right. But could you imagine no. having to listen to that all day? <laughs> this is what her husband has to go through. But check this story out. Okay? So the husband, you know about him, right? He's an right. attorney. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, George Conway. So he tweets after she does the appearance with Chris Cuomo, given that Trump has repeatedly lied about the Daniels and McDougal payments and given that he lies about virtually everything else to the point of his f own former personal lawyer describing him as an effing liar, why should we take his word over that uh, of, of federal prosecutors? So, you know, he's any given opportunity ripping into Trump and her job is to protect him. So what is that all about? When she goes home, what what's what's that marriage like? I have to think maybe that's the, that that's how they uh, keep it keep the whole thing keep spicy. <laughs> that's that's the dance they do. You yep. know what I mean? They, that's the, I have to think that's the whole thing. They say opposites attract. Right. Uh, I, I have to think that's. The, do you remember these two? Um, who were they? Uh, Mary Madeline and James Carville. The uh, when, when the Clintons were in, James Carville was the guy who ran the Clinton campaign. Right, right, Remember right. Her? The, the snake. Yeah. The, the, the snake man. The reptilian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to think like at night he turns into some sort of a reptile. That guy looks really serious. He is. He's like lizard man. But it was the same type of, uh, same type of thing. They would go back and forth and argue. And, you know, she was extremely conservative. He was very liberal. Maybe they make up. Well, that's the whole thing. That's why I have to think that that's the dance that these two do. Uh, I understand, you know, uh, James Carville and Mary Madeline. I could see the makeup sex there or the hot, you know, mm. uh, you know that, that type of sex. Good God. <laughs> I didn't want to think about 
Kellyanne Conway, and I didn't know. Well, he's not in the best of shape. Yeah. I, seriously, I don't even want to think about what that's all about. My goodness. Uh, but I, I have to think that's the only way that the thing works. Cause, you know, You're a bad just... girl today, haven't you? You lied, didn't you? Yeah. You're a naughty girl. I saw you with Christopher. I like when you called him Christopher. Kiss me with that mouth after you lied. Put that mask on. <laughs> all right. This is Barsky Radio for Chad Benson. Stay right here. Don't move. This is the Chad Benson Show.